let's talk about the money that is being spent. I think that there needs to be a federal audit against the company that we have contracted out to take care of the migrants. We have nurses that are being paid $64,000 a month. We have security officers that are being paid as much as $24,000 a month. We have home health care workers that are being paid up to $17,000 a month. You don't think that Chicagoans could have benefited from that? We have citizens in this city that have been on the waiting list for affordable housing for years, and migrants have been bumped in front of them. We have people who have been given up to $9,000 a month for housing assistance. That amount of money can be life-changing for some families here in the city of Chicago. We are not anti-migrant. We do sympathize with them. But what I am is I am pro-black. I am for my people who have been mistreated, who have been marginalized, who have been disrespected. And it is disrespectful for people to expect us to give up our parks and our schools and places in our community for others. We're not saying that there's not room here, but what we are saying is that we are not going to step aside for you to accommodate them when you have continued to leave us out of the equation. So I'm not just talking to Brandon Johnson right now. I'm talking to Governor Pritzker, and I'm talking to President Biden. And I want you to understand that as we run into this upcoming political year, where the Democratic Party is on the menu, hear me, people of Chicago, of Illinois, and of the United States. It is time for us as black people yeah. to stop voting party. Come on. Right. It is time for yeah. us to stop voting color. Yes. It is time for us to start voting our self-interest. Yes. Yes. And if the Democrats in the city of Chicago, the state of Illinois, and the country of USA refuses to listen to us, then it is time for us hey. to start looking at other alternatives. Hey. People, we are looking at other alternatives. Yeah. We right. will not step yeah. aside and continue to be mistreated. We will not continue to be disrespected. I'm looking at people who are coming here from another country, given work visas, given social security cards. Nobody is asking them what walk of life that they come from. Right. You don't think that our brothers who have been in prison, who have come out and who have changed their lives, will yeah. benefit from the same opportunities yeah. Yeah. that we are giving these migrants. Yeah. And I'm not saying that they don't deserve those opportunities, but what I am saying is we deserve them first. Yeah. Yeah. What I am saying yeah. is you can't continue to put us on the back burner and think that we're going to continue to be okay with it. We've done that for long enough. Yeah. And what we're saying here today is that it's no longer acceptable. Good. We're saying to our city, we're saying to our, our governor that you're not going to continue to set monies aside for people who don't live here and disrespect, mistreat, and, and forget about us. Amen. You've forgotten about us. Yep. You have treated us as if we yep. don't matter. And we're saying to you, you're not going to continue to do this. We're saying to you yeah. to see us. You're dumping people into our communities who are going to at some point move us out of the way. Yeah. And what I say to yeah. you, if you want a glimpse into what's going to happen, look at how people of color are being treated in Venezuela right now. We seem to forget that Venezuela was one of the first places that had African slaves that they were taken to. Yeah. We're forgetting about that. Yeah. And so we're forgetting that there are blacks in Venezuela who are being treated the same way we are. And so for us to expect that they're going to come here and be put into our society and treat us differently is a pipe dream. It's Jessica Jackson, and I'm a member of the community over here on the south side. I want to say that this problem is bigger than any alderman that's sitting in city council. This is an attack yes. on the black community, 
by the Democratic Party, and this is an attack on the citizens of this city. Yeah. We, our rights are being violated. Our civil rights are being violated. There is no law that allows for non-citizens to come into our communities, force themselves into our communities, force themselves into public accommodations, force themselves into schools that could have been open for our children. Right. The constant discrimination against black people has to stop. I'm at the city council meetings all the time. I have yet to see any black official any Hispanic official, any white official, stand up and say that this is a violation against the civil rights of our citizens in this city or the citizens in, Chicago, in the United States of America. We had an incident day before yesterday with a young man named Michael Young Bay who was doing what many of you are doing right now, filming in a public building in City Hall filming a public official, Alderman Greg Mitchell. Greg Mitchell did not like being filmed and he made an aggressive attack on Michael. Michael went to jail. He went to jail because he asked to file a report on Greg Mitchell. Now we all witnessed a few days before then where the Brighton community had an attack against that argument. No arrests were made. We all witnessed when the Palestinians were protesting in City Hall about the war between Palestine and Israel. We witnessed them jumping and fighting the police. No arrests was made. It's all anchored in the fact that those people, they have a whole different political platform that black people do. Those people have protections from their countries. They have embassies, they have consulates, the United States is in treaties with these people, all kind of deals. So America handles them lightly. Black America only has the United States of America for our government. And our government is failing us. We fought for the civil rights laws in this country. We fought yeah. for the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment. Yeah. We fought for the freedoms of this country, and yet we're the last ones that's reaping the benefits of it. Yeah. I was told by our alderman, Stephanie Coleman, mm. that the money for the Southwest Side Invest, the 320 that's a million that's supposed to be earmarked, which we later found out was $2.2 billion. She tells me that that money is a hoax. Yeah. Well, if it's a joke, you need to go find our real money. Because there's no way in the world that the black citizens of this city does not have real money yeah. in the pot of the city of Chicago. Where's our money? Why are we constantly being told that things have to be studied? Reparation has to be studied. Reparations was in order since 1865. How much studying must the Democratic Party do? Where's our money? Where's the money for the economic development of our communities? Why is it that we're being put in a position for the immigrants to come into our community, they're going to get money, and they're going to get money to open small businesses. Yeah. And they're going to open those yeah, small businesses are. in these communities. And, and then our people like are going to be forced to, to buy from them after home. they've invaded our country come and on. invaded our neighborhoods. We say no, well, we say we say no. no we to say all no of this. We say no we say to all no. of this, and we're asking that the governor stop demanding, thank yeah. you for the correction, we're demanding that Governor Christa, that he exercise his governor rights, like we see the Florida governor exercising his. We see the Texas governor exercising his. But now when you get to Illinois, all of a sudden, our governor can't do anything except for acceptance. Is he a man or a mouse? We want what's entitled to us in this country. We're demanding that Governor Prisoner turn those buses around. We're demanding that Brandon Johnson stop allowing those Hispanic aldermen, the, the deputy mayor, of immigration, migrants, and, re and refugees, I believe her last name is De Leon, 
and that uh, the satires. Yeah. Why are they not speaking about this? Because they too are my, my, uh, monetarily benefiting from it. People need to stop getting rich off the black back of black people and give us our rights and give us our money. Uncle two from here, we have a relative that was murdered. I'm standing here with my family and we are demanding we are not asking anyone for anything. We are demanding that resources come to the black community. We are no longer asking. Black people are the most loving, the most accepting, the most honorable people. We are people of dignity. Many of us have followed the rules yes. have done what was, we were told is the right thing. Yeah. But we keep getting overlooked. Come on. And our children and the youth mm. keep getting overlooked. Come on. And it's past time that it stops. This is ridiculous. Mm. We are citizens. We are citizens of the city. We are still dealing with violence. We are dealing with health crisis. We're dealing with high levels of unemployment. We can run the whole gamut, and every time that there's a list of negative things, we're at the top of the list. But when it's a list of good things, positive things, we're at the bottom of the list. Come on, or you can say the front of the land or the back of the land. Hmm. We're not standing here begging for anything. Right, right. We say no. When it's time to vote the budget for any additional resources, other than for the black community, we say no. What do we say? No. no. What do we say? No. no. We say no. No. We say absolutely not. Not as long as we still have to bury our children. Come on. How is it that we're going to talk about the future of children, and I get that children are children, but how are we going to talk about the future of one set of children and bury the other set? And the ones that are being buried are the descendants and the offspring, children of the citizens. It makes no sense. And we're talking to the aldermen and anyone else that have anything to do with the vote. We say no. We demand the resources now. And you know what? This ain't the first press conference. We understand that. And you probably don't even take what we say as serious. But you know what? Action speaks louder than words. Right. Right. Action right. speaks louder than words. We are right. sick and tired of being sick and tired. So we are standing here. We are standing here on the behalf of our children, our grandchildren, our great grandchildren. And you know what? We look in the eyes of our children every day. Every day. We look in the eyes of our people every single day. Every day. Don't tell me about how.